Good evening and welcome. I'm Selena Mead with the VSB TV 11 Evening News on this Monday, April the 28th. Our top story tonight, dozens of Bermuda's past and current sports stars joined a large group of island dignitaries on Friday night, all day Saturday and Sunday morning to give the Commonwealth Games Queen's Baton a rousing welcome and public display. Blessed by perfect weather, the schedule of appearances arranged by the Bermuda Olympic Association enabled Bermuda to become the 60th stop of the Baton's journey on its way to Glasgow and the July start of the Games to which some 35 Bermudian contestants will be traveling. The weekend events filmed for us by the government CITV cameras contain many highlights which we have excerpted here for your enjoyment. I look forward to seeing the parts of the games and to seeing 43rd, 44th, 45th, 46th Bermudian medals. Bermuda's score so far since 1930 when Bermuda took part in the first games is 42. stand before you as your premier this year to receive the Queen's baton for the relay of the Commonwealth Games of 2014. Everyone, let's have that gumbe beat again, yes? Look forward to the Commonwealth Games in July. Hopefully, Accompanying these men will be a, a few more medalists. The Bermuda Regiment will escort the baton from the arena. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Mark Pettengill is in London attending the Ukraine Forum on Asset Recovery at the invitation of the British Home Secretary Theresa May and U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder. Although the forum's objective is to deliver maximum impact in initiating and advancing international cooperation on individual cases regarding stolen assets currently being pursued by the Ukrainian government and its partners, Mr. Pettengill will also use the occasion to have private talks with Ms. May and Mr. Holder over issues involving Bermuda's relations with Britain and the U.S. Bermuda's Attorney General has been invited to moderate the first panel session of the forum by the World Bank after the impression he made in addressing the Arab Forum last year on the subject of money laundering. In other news, it's Organ Donor Week and 12 years old, a young Bermudian female passed away. 
and her parents decided to donate her organs. After a lengthy process, the recipient of the young woman's heart was able to contact the family of the organ donor and express his gratitude. In keeping with Organ Donor Week, VSB's Julia Smat sat down and spoke with Jose Feminia about receiving a new heart and how it has given him a new lease on life. Yeah, before I received the heart transplant, um, I was diagnosed with um, cardiomyopathy, which um, is an enlarged heart. So um, I was diagnosed with um, cardiomyopathy, and I was in, in medications, you know, for two years until, you know, my heart got weaker and, you know, larger. So I, I was in need of a heart transplant, you know, right away. And uh, they put me up in the list, you know, in the bank, you know, donor bank, and um, and I that's when I receive, you know, her heart, you know, yeah. And how has how has that how has that uh, changed, you know, your life? Oh, completely. Yeah. My family, they're like so, you know, glad. You know, everybody is so happy, you know, that I'm back. You know, my mother too. You know, she's very appreciated. You know, I feel like, you know, more healthy, more stronger. You know, before. You know, when I got sick, I couldn't do a lot of stuff, you know, like I couldn't walk, go up the stairs, all that stuff, you know, now I can do everything normally. A young woman, the young woman's mother, Charmaine Laws, told VSB News that she had all of her daughter's organs and ish tissues donated 12 years ago and is grateful to have been able to meet the recipient of her child's heart. She talked to VSB News about the importance of being an organ donor. It's very important to be a donor. In my eyes, it saves so many lives. At, at your loss, it is a great loss when you lo lose a loved one. But the outcome is that if the, that loved one is a donor, many other families can be saved. Many, many other families and lives can be enhanced and saved through organ and tissue donor. And you were saying earlier uh, something along the lines of it's important to, for families to talk and no request. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, it is important for families um, of those individuals that plan to be an organ donor to let the families know what the request is because there's nothing written in stone. If you request, if your request is to be an organ donor, it's very, very important to let your spouse, your next of kin, your children, your family members know. So in the event that um, you die and your organs have to be donated, your husband would not be in disagreement with the uh, hospital um, clientele when they ask. A new women's rifle drill team set to make its debut at the annual Bermuda Day Parade has got a seal of approval from the wives of Governor George Ferguson and Premier Craig Cannonier after a weekend visit to Warwick Camp. Margaret Ferguson and Antoinette Cannonier joined forces to inspect the detachment of the Bermuda Rifle and Drill Team formed by Regiment Sergeant Debbie Simons and being trained by Bermuda Regiment Drill Instructors. Mrs. Ferguson commended the initiative that was being shown and admired the group of women with their mix of age groups and other interests. Mrs. Cannonier added that it appeared to be a great opportunity for teamwork, fitness and learning something new. The 25 strong team will perform in public for the first time on Bermuda Day and they plan to attend a major parade in Chicago later this year. In other news, a man appeared in magistrate's court on charges of violently resisting arrest and assaulting police officers in March of this year. Jalal Rochester pleaded guilty to the charges. The court heard that police officers approached the defendant and upon questioning him, Rochester began shouting and insisting that the officers should not arrest him. The officers proceeded to attempt to arrest the defendant, which was then when Rochester and pushed the officers and spat at them over three times. Rochester's defense lawyers requested a conditional discharge. However, Senior Magistrate Archibald Warner rejected the request and instead sentenced Rochester to 10 days in jail. Bermuda's rate of inflation climbed three points to the 2% level in March, the first time in 12 months that has climbed out of the 1% level. Health and personal care posted an annual increase in March of 7.6%, while food went up 3.2%, and transport and vehicles went up 2%. Still ahead is Rachel Sodom with the weather preview. Thanks, Selena. Partly cloudy and breezy.
On the radar, not much activity, so we're expecting a dry night. But please stay tuned for the full weather report as we take a look at the week ahead. The weather radar picture provided courtesy of the Ministry of Transport on VSB TV 11. Help build a lasting legacy with the Bermuda Hospital's Charitable Trust. Support our hospital by purchasing a 4 by 8 inch brick for the Legacy Walkway. Your engraved brick will be predominantly featured outside the new acute care wing. You can customize your brick with a personal message, a tribute, names of family members, or even a special thank you. Call 295-2428 or visit bhct.bm to make arrangements for your Legacy Brick today. Open 9 to 7, Monday to Saturday, on 41 Victoria Street in Hamilton, for your home appliance and hardware needs. Sears, washers and dryers, refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, a large array of craftsman tools and accessories, lawn and garden tools, fitness equipment, outdoor furniture, barbecue grills, and much, much more. Open 9 to 7, Monday to Saturday. Sears, bringing Bermuda the best variety at everyday low prices. Bermuda is an easy way to find great discounts while discovering fun activities to do in Bermuda. Discover the best spas, restaurants, activities, services, and shops at 50% off. Sign up to Bermuda and start saving today. And welcome back to VSB TV 11. A lunchtime celebration at City Hall and an evening blast at the Docksiders Club on Front Street on Wednesday will see to it that UNESCO's third annual international jazz event is acknowledged just as enthusiastic, enthusiastically here as it is in other parts of the world. Organizer Wendell Shine Hayward is particularly encouraged by the support he got today from the jazz workshops he had organized and the continued strength of the local school jazz band. Uh, the first year it was held in Paris. Uh, last year, as the second year, it was held in Istanbul, Turkey. And then, as I said earlier this year, it will be in uh, Osaka, China, which I wish I was attending. Maybe next year. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it, and that event in China, Brian, will also be um, streamed. So persons can actually um, uh, witness um, all of the fantastic musicians that will be there. Persons such as Herbie Hancock, um, Marcus Miller, Esperanza Spalding, uh, Dee Dee Bridgewater, Quincy Jones. The list goes on and on um, with regards to the, the, the talent that will be there. And we will be able to see that. But we are encouraging Bermudians to come out and, and, and support the events that we are having here uh, in Bermuda also. Uh, like most things, encouraging the young guarantees that it goes on. And of course, this Warwick student band is just sen sensational. Yes, they are. And I, and I take my hat off to my, my, my good friend and, um, and good buddy, um, uh, Brother Ken Hayward, who has you know, kept the jazz band alive there at, at Warwick Academy. Um, also, you know, there's a very fine jazz band at, at Salters, another uh, jazz band um, happening at Cedar Bridge and, and, um, and, and, the, and the Barclay. Um, so, you know, our our, our, edu our music educators here in Bermuda are doing their part to, you know, keep this art form, art form alive and should be um, commended. The Learning Disabilities Association in Bermuda is holding a Teacher of the Year contest for students currently in the middle schools. As volunteer organizer Claire Percy explains, the new contest gives students until May the 7th to submit a photo, essay, video essay, poem, song, or written essay on the qualities of their favorite teacher and his or her approach to teaching. It is a brand new thing for us. It has been done in the past quite a few years ago, but we're, we are uh, bringing it back to life. Um, it's a competition for middle school age children who would like to embrace their teacher and um, give some support back to the education. Now we know that they choose a teacher of the year from the professionals themselves. Mm -hmm. The difference is this is the kids choosing. Yes. Yeah, the kids get to choose. They can come up with creative ways on how to embrace their teacher, um, really give us a sense of how the teacher makes learning fun, um, differential learning styles, and how it's, in, it's helped them learn certain subjects or, you know, find things that they really are passionate about as students. This is not just learning disabilities, it's not just kids or teachers, it's the whole 
education system? Yeah, we're, we're not trying to specialize in the learning disability. We want to embrace all different learning styles. Um, the middle and if the middle schools, yeah, definitely in the middle schools. Right now, this year, we're focusing on the middle school level. I see an interesting prize for the teacher that wins. Yes, yes, the teacher that wins gets to go to the Learning Disability Conference, which I believe is in Chicago, so 2015 conference. Well, um, why would you think an ordinary teacher would, would want the, the skills there? You know, I think it's important for everybody to always do continuing education in, in whatever field they're in. Um, so if it, it can help a teacher help at least one student, we've done our job. So it's, it's definitely a, a great prize and a, a great um, reward for a teacher to be able to go and continue their education and, and learn how to help students differently in, in, in every way. Now here's a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. Here are the daily markets presented by Bias. U.S. stocks advanced as an earlier sell-off in Internet and small-cap companies reversed. U.S. Treasury prices declined for the first time in a week ahead of the Fed meeting tomorrow. The S&P closed higher after a volatile session as gains in Apple and Pfizer helped offset another round of selling in tech shares. The S&P closed at 1,869 points, a gain of 0.32%. 5,000 shares of Bank of N.T. Butterfield traded hands today. The stock closed at $2, a decline of 2.44%. 1,000 shares of Keytech also traded hands. The stock closed down 0.2%. European stocks advanced today, led by a surge in AstraZeneca PLC as Pfizer Inc. confirmed its interest in taking it over. The FTSE 100 advanced 0.22% to close at 6,700 points. Most Asian stocks fell as investors weighed earnings and prospects that Russia will be subjected to new sanctions as tensions over Ukraine intensify. The Bovespa was little changed today as Petrobras rose to a three-week high on Brazil election speculation. The index closed up 0.02% after sliding to as much as 0.4% on the day. U.S. Treasury prices fell and yields rose for the first time in a week ahead of the Federal Reserve meeting tomorrow, at which they are forecasted to further scale back bond purchases. The Japanese yen fell again most of its peers as President Obama issued sanctions on Russian individuals and companies. That was a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. People in Places is next after the break. Price Right on Mill Reach offers you warehouse shopping for bulk and value priced groceries, frozen foods and health and beauty items, home furnishings, dinnerware and carpets for your bedroom, bathroom and kitchen, bikes, toys and activity sets for kids, teens and tweens, electronics and home and audio visual accessories. Visit Price Right. Always something new and always something for everyone. Open 9 to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 1 to 6 on Sundays. I'm Peter Javetic, host of Season to Taste. Tune in on Tuesday night during the VSB TV Level News. I'll have Chef Paul Lawrence here, owner of the Hickory Stick. He's going to be preparing lionfish for us, this invasive species, and find out what the Gosling's Wine of the Week is. Tuesday during the VSB TV 11 News. And we now have People in Places with Charles Webb. People in Places with Charles Webb is brought to you by Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Hospitality Month ends in a few days' time. And I thought it would be a good idea to find out from two of our volunteers how important Hospitality Month is to Bermuda. In fact, they tell me 
it is very important. Personally, I feel that it should be yearly. It should be every month. But um, it's very important because it, it puts in the forefront of uh, the citizens in Bermuda and everyone around how important the hospitality industry is to us as a whole and also the fact that it is, you know, one of our uh, number one industries other than international uh, business. So it's important to, you know, ensure that everyone's a part of it, maybe the bus drivers, maybe taxi drivers, retail shops, you know, everyone's included in the hospitality industry. Hospitality to me is my is anyone that deals with the public, deals with customers, might it be the hospital, might it be uh, the students that get on the bus and, you know, the politeness, Bermudians are known for, you know, the students get off, get up and give, you know, the people that are older than them a seat. It's just being polite and and hospitable to anyone that uh, you come across. You know, it's, it's it could be um, your colleague, you know, it, it could be your teacher, it could, it could, your parents, you know, it's just being hospitable, just being polite and pleasant and going above and beyond. I've actually been volunteering for over three years with Bermuda Hospitality Institute. Prior to that, I've actually uh, been a guest speaker many times at the Bermuda College for the hospitality program. How do you manage to get all this volunteer work in with your regular duties here at the hotel? It's a balancing act, but I seem to manage. Um, I, I actually do like 12 to 14 hours a day in the hospitality industry. It, it's not easy, but um, I find it very important to you know ensure that I put back into the community. And uh, one of my passions is, is your hospitality. And um, I, I manage. It, it's Like I said, it's not very easy, but I manage. <laughs> But you've been in the industry over 20 years. Do you see any people on the way that you might be able to entice into the industry? Actually, I would say yes. Um, I volunteer um, in the school system, and it's been the uh, primary school uh, sector. And I tend to find that the um, younger generation are very, very engaging. If you had to predict the future of our industry, how much do you think our people are going to be involved? I would say, and if you're talking about percentages, I would like to see at least 70% uh, of uh, Bermudians back into the hospitality industry. And I personally feel if we focus on the younger generation and instill in them the importance of the hospitality industry, and, you know, it, it's our somewhat, as we would say, bread and butter, and we have two industries, international business as well as the hospitality industry, I think it will make a difference. It's, it's what us in the hospitality industry pass on to the younger generation and, and what we get out of it. It's a very rewarding industry at the same time as well. Ecotourism relates to hospitality in many different ways. First things first, in ecotourism, what we're trying to do with my particular company is expose these beautiful places around the island that just don't get the credibility and the, the exposure that they actually deserve. So it's bringing out the most beautiful aspects of, of the country, as I said, these places that are more so, quote unquote, secret hidden gems, as we like to, of course, call them in our company, Hidden Gems of Bermuda Limited. We, we like to really showcase those particular places for something new and different for our, our tourism community to do. Do you think that the Hospitality Month has been successful this year? So, so far it has been, yes. I think it's always great to have Hospitality Month come along at least once a year to put all Bermudians um, back in their minds, back in perspective as to what it is that we're trying to provide our tourism community. It's an awareness that we all have and we have to maintain that Bermudian friendliness that we're all known for. Here at the Fairmont Girl Lounge at the Princess in Hamilton for People and Places, I'm Charles Webb, VSB News. People and Places with Charles Webb has been brought to you by Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Want for much more furniture? Then shop at Big Saving Zone. Their prices are guaranteed, not estimates. Have you ever ordered something online expecting it to be a certain price, but when it arrives, it ends up being a whole lot more? Beware of those unexpected hidden fees. That never happens at Big Saving Zone. Their prices include all charges landed in Bermuda, so there's no surprises when your order arrives. Why settle for imitations? Shop at Big Saving Zone. At the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Welcome back in sports tonight. The Belco Cup cricket competition has a new format involving 10 teams this year instead of four. Former Bermuda opening batsman Alan Richardson, who is also a former BCB executive, welcomes the format change. 
thought it was a good idea actually to invite a few more teams um, to get more involved. Um, so I thought it was I thought it was a great idea to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, well, how do you relate that to the way the format was in previous years, top four going through? I mean, now you don't have to make the top four. You can still get a chance to get into it. Well, I think they've, they've, they're probably, and I can only assume that the board are probably looking at, like I said earlier, just to uh, get more people involved, more teams involved in the, in the actual event. Um, it's not so much getting into it. Um, or, 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 or the legitimacy of getting into the competition, but it's actually being in the competition itself. Once you're there, then you obviously have to, you know, compete and beat the best. Yeah. Now that's going to force the BCB to start these prelims earlier. This year we know, May 17th and 18th. What about the wickets getting ready? You're now putting pressure on groundsmen. Well, Mike, I think that's a good idea because in the past, through my experience, we've always had problems with the grounds being ready on time. And I think with actually there being a competition in place, um, then the clubs will vie to get those matches at their grounds and hence um, they'll put a bit more um, a priority in getting the wickets ready. So I think, I think it's a good thing to actually put the competition in place, this is where it will be and it's up to the clubs and if the clubs are not ready then switch it to one of the clubs that are. And so this will give more impetus on the clubs to get their grounds ready. Mm -hmm. Now last season you was a little up in arms, we took a thrashing over there for World Cup qualifying and you said we didn't have our strongest players and, uh, and the strong ones that we have were finishing matches at 2 o'clock due to this, this open league, weak teams playing strong teams, now it's been readjusted, it's back to the Super League. You know, Mike, I, I, I really don't know what the thinking was behind. And I'm sure they have they have they had their reasons and, and, and I'm not privy to that. But on the outside looking I thought it was, was probably one of the worst ideas having a combined division. Um, if you look at the season before that, uh, the, when they had the two divisions, it was very exciting in both divisions, right down to the wire. So I'm hoping that now with this the, the, the two tier sort of system, I think it's it's probably gonna build well for Bermuda cricket. Because I think also that the top teams want to play against the top opposition week in and week out. Um, and, and I think it builds well for cricket. I think we're he now heading in the right direction. Do it. Enjoy your new shower. Experience the bold look of Kohler at a Kohler registered showroom. Good evening, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend and welcome to tonight's VSB weather forecast. Our weather shot is brought to us by Donna Hendrickson, taken at noon in Southampton. Look at these colors. The water absolutely spectacular. Winds coming out of the sort of the north, so south shore, beautiful and calm. And just another beautiful day, not just a couple clouds in the sky and gorgeous, gorgeous sunshine. Thank you, Donna, for sending in this beautiful capture. Temperatures for today, we had a high of 70 at 2 in the afternoon and a low of 66 at 7 in the morning. Current conditions, 67 degrees, humidity, 60%. Winds northwest, 18 to 22 knots. And barometric pressure is steady at 29.96 inches. Rainfall index in the month of April, 1.94 for a yearly total of 21.03. Yearly normal starting to catch up at 18.29 inches. And looking at the satellite, a low pressure center to the near northeast maintains moderate to strong winds through Tuesday, while mainly fair and dry conditions through the week. Continue through the week. A ridge of high pressure building by Wednesday decreases winds through Thursday. Those of you who are traveling, let's take a look at the gateway cities. Atlanta, severe thunderstorms, 79. Boston, mostly cloudy, 48. Charlotte, rain, 78. London, mostly cloudy, 51. Miami, 88, mostly sunny. New York, 53, rain likely. Orlando, 92, partly cloudy. Philadelphia, rain and 54. Toronto, rain and 45. And Washington, also rain and 58 degrees. Back at home tonight, partly to mostly cloudy with a low near 65. Winds northwest, 18 to 22 knots. And tomorrow, sunny periods with a high near 70. Winds northwest, 18 to 22. And then decreasing, 15 to 20 knots. And then veering north-northwest in the evening. And then veering again northerly uh, late at night. Marine tonight, we've got a small craft warning with seas inside the reef, 2 to 3 feet. 
Seas outside the reef, 6 to 9 feet, and the sea surface temperature is 71 degrees. Rain tomorrow, small craft warning continues with seas inside the reef, 2 to 4 feet. Seas outside the reef, 7 to 11 feet. High tide will be at 9.18 in the morning, and low tide will be at 3.10 in the afternoon. Taking a look at the five-day forecast. Wednesday, mix of sun and cloud, high near 70 and breezy. Thursday, mix of sun and cloud, high near 72. Friday, sunny periods, breezy with a high near 73. And Saturday, sunny periods with a high near 74. Thank you to Michelle Pitcher, our meteorologist for tonight, and everyone at the Bermuda Weather Service. I'm Rachel Sodden. Have a great evening. And just a special acknowledgement to one of our local viewers, Ms. Clarissa Woolwich, who will be celebrating her 87th birthday on this Thursday, May the 1st. We thank you for joining us at VSB TV 11. Good night, Bermuda. Wardrobe and makeup for Rachel Sodden, provided by Gibbons Company. VSB, CD11, Bermuda.